One common theme that emerges from studying the history of different folk cultures is that there's nothing quite like a few centuries of invasion, oppression and emigration to ensure the vigorous survival of a country's traditional music. While in Russia there was a sorry tale of the virtual elimination of authentic village instrumental music, in neighbouring Ukraine an exciting tradition of fiddling is still alive and well. In the West there was until recently a tendency to think of Ukraine as simply a part of Russia, but in fact it has its own very distinctive culture, identity and history, brought into sharp focus by Russia's attempt to wipe the country from the map. Although it was incorporated as one of the Soviet Union's 16 republics, it has, since 1991, been once more an independent country, lying on Russia's southwestern border. As the breadbasket of Europe, this has always been an attractive territory for predatory neighbours, and in the 19th century it was split between Russia and the Austro-Hungarian empires. Moscow referred to their portion rather condescendingly as Little Russia. The majority of the population was rural, and numerous episodes of agrarian resettlement in the 19th century forced workers off the land with no choice but to emigrate. The majority went to America, where they found work in the mining and construction industries. They took with them a large body of traditional music and dance, which, as is typical of expatriate communities, they clung on to for all it was worth. By the time of the Russian Revolution, there were around 750,000 Ukrainians in the US and a further 250,000 in Canada. In their new communities, many bands were formed or reformed, creating the typical music of their homeland. Recordings made in the 20s and 30s give us an excellent record of what the music sounded like. The typical band was a Troika Musica, musical trio, usually led by a fiddle along with instruments such as the Burben, a two-sided drum, the Cymbali or Cymbalom, and the Sapilka or flute. In medieval times the Bandura, a type of lute, was distinctive of Ukraine, being the favourite mode of accompaniment for the Kobzars or travelling minstrels. A three-string Rebec-like fiddle, the Gudok, was also common until it was replaced by the violin. One of the most popular Ukrainian folk melodies is the Bandura Waltz. There was a tradition of choral music by training priests going back to the year 1600. These priests composed their own songs, both sacred and secular, and many of these were absorbed into the general village folk repertoire. In 1902 in Kharkiv, in northeastern Ukraine, someone came up with the idea of combining this combination with the Bandura playing Kobzar tradition, and an ensemble of 14 singers and Bandurists was formed. The combination seemed to capture the essence of Ukrainian history and culture and quickly caught on. By 1930 there were around 900 of these Bandurist capellas in Ukraine. State-run folklore ensembles were also formed in Soviet times. The macho Cossack dancing and the lively hopaks lend themselves to large-scale stage performance. Indeed, it is this Ukrainian tradition that largely dominates what we in the West thought of in the late 20th century as Russian folk music and dance. There are various tune and dance types peculiar to Ukraine. Firstly, the Kolomeka. This can be a combination of tune, song and dance. Some recordings have a line of singing alternating with a line of instrumental melody, while some are purely instrumental. The text, in rhyming couplets, is usually a humorous commentary on everyday life. It is believed to originate in the town of Kolomya, in the Carpathian foothills of western Ukraine. Its simple 2-4 rhythm and structure makes the Kolomika very adaptable, and the texts and melodies of literally thousands of different versions have been annotated. One collection alone, by Volodymyr Shukovich, in 1905, contains more than 8,000. Although centuries old, the form remains very popular today. The melodies are fast and exciting, sometimes with syncopation, and can be in major or minor keys. They make great fiddle tunes. The Kozachok. The name derives from Kozak or Cossack. The Cossacks were Ukrainian peasants who, from the 17th century, refused to accept serfdom, instead becoming warriors, often acting as mercenaries, and sometimes gaining a degree of independence. They became a symbol of military skill and heroism, and the Kozachok celebrates their exploits. The melody is usually in major key. The rhythm, like that of the Kolomeka, is in 2-4, often accelerating after a slow introduction. The Hopak. Similar to the Kazachok, this is a lively dance in a major key, used by dancers to show off their flashiest kicks and leaps, and to demonstrate strength and speed. 
The name comes from the word Hopati, to jump. It was originally only danced by male Cossack soldiers, but was eventually adopted by villagers in Cossack areas as a mixed dance. Composers such as Mazorgsky, Rimsky-Korsakov and Tchaikovsky incorporated hopak melodies into operatic compositions. Melodically, Ukrainian music tends to be more varied than Russian. Whilst in Russia the great majority of tunes are in minor keys, in Ukraine there is a majority of major key tunes. There is also more use of the oriental sounding augmented seconds rarely found in Russian music. Early Ukrainian American Recordings the staple diet of Ukrainian instrumental music is most often heard these days as accompaniment for dance ensembles. While the melodies are shown off to good advantage, the arrangements are frequently rather orchestral. The best place to hear them played with an honest raw fiddle style is in the recordings made by musicians who emigrated to the US in late 19th and early 20th centuries. One such recording, now widely available, is Ukrainian American Fiddle Music, First Recordings, 1926-36, released in 1977 by Ahuli Records. It features a variety of different instrumental and vocal combinations. The playing is lively, passionate, and, in the words of the liner notes, full of piss, fire and vinegar. The fiddle leads most of the ensembles, along with second fiddle, bowed bass and cymbalum. One of the best Ukrainian-Americans was fiddler Paolo Humaniuk, 1884-1965. He emigrated in about 1902 and in 1926 released the record Ukrainsky Vesily, Ukrainian Wedding, which recreated the various traditions and ceremonies, along with much humour and chatter, from cameo characters including the gruff father and the weeping bride. <coughs> Though pitched perfectly for the homesick Ukrainian, it sold well even to non-Ukrainian speakers, shifting in total almost 150,000 copies. Humeniuk was a hard worker, playing weddings, concerts and vaudeville, and by 1940 he had made more than 100 records. His playing is sturdy and vigorous, ornamented with trills, drones and occasional slides. He uses little or no vibrato, even on the slow sentimental numbers. This is very different from the gypsy style that best represents Russian fiddling. A selection of his recordings, re-released by Ahuli in 1993, is entitled Paolo Humeniuk, King of the Ukrainian Fiddlers. Since the mid-20th century, Ukrainian traditional music has been absorbed to some extent into the melting pot of polka and two-step playing that is so popular in rural America. A good example of a more recent but still excellent collection comes from Michael Skor and his Ukrainian ensemble called 17 Popular Ukrainian Dancers, released in the 1960s on Monitor Records. The Kolomakers, Hopaks and Kozachoks, particularly those in major keys, sit happily alongside old-time American fiddle tunes, and it has even been pointed out that the old-time tune floppy and Mule bears an uncanny resemblance to the Ukrainian Daubush Kozak. In recent years, the conservatory-trained Ukrainian gypsy fiddler Vasil Popidiuk, known as Papaduke, who emigrated to Canada, has achieved crossover success with his band. He plays Gypsy World Fusion and is equally popular with emigre Ukrainians and in the mainstream markets, though his playing to my ear owes more to the Gypsy tradition than the Ukrainian. A good example of a contemporary expat Ukrainian folk band is Karinya, featuring Sana Shepko on fiddle. <laughs> Ukrainian klezmer. Running alongside the Cossack folk tradition of Ukraine is the Jewish folk music known as klezmer. The founder of Hasidism, the Baal Shem Tov, was born in western Ukraine around 1700. Rejecting the polka-faced, overly serious nature of Judaism at the time, he taught that closeness to God could best be achieved through music, song and dance. This radical change gave a great boost to the development of klezmer, and tune types such as the nigan and chosidl are among the most powerful in the repertoire. Many Jews moved to Ukraine from the shtetls or village settlements of Russia in the 19th century. Ukraine was, compared to Russia, a very cosmopolitan place, and up to 140,000 Jews rubbed shoulders with Romanians, Gypsies, Greeks and Crimean Tatars, expanding and enriching their repertoire. The port city of Odessa in particular was a real cultural melting pot. The waterfront area of Moldovanska became known as a festering slum where Klezmerim rubbed shoulders with black marketeers, criminals and prostitutes. 
The tune 740 tells the tale of an infamous train robbery which took place when a group of bandits targeted the Friday evening train, taking prosperous businessmen to their homes in the country. Many more klezmer classics commemorate life in the city, such as Odessa Bulgar, Odeskaya and Goodbye Odessa. Another important centre for Jewish life was Berichev in central Ukraine. In 1847 there were at least 50 klezmer in working in the town, including a violinist known as Pedutsa. He was born near Kiev in a Hasidic family and soon after moving to Berdichev he was known as the Lord of the Klezmers, leading a 13-piece band. He said of himself, When I play for the poor, I am the most important dish, and when I play for the rich, my violin sounds like jewellery, but all they want to do is eat. Ukraine was also one of the cradles of the Yiddish theatre, pioneered by the Ukrainian Jew Abraham Goldfaden. One of the first such performances of music, Yiddish song, theatre and comedy, took place in Odessa in 1878. The formula was an immediate success and it was soon replicated throughout southeastern Europe and eventually as far afield as London and New York. Not only was Ukraine one of the most important centres for klezmer in Eastern Europe, it was also the area where the music was best preserved. Moshe Berigovsky, a Ukrainian Jew born in 1892, became the foremost folklorist and ethnomusicologist of the klezmer tradition. Between 1929 and 1947, he recorded over a thousand wax cylinders of music and song and published around 700 examples of klezmer tunes. The tradition lives on in the hands of contemporary bands such as the Kharkiv Klezmer Band, founded in 1999 and featuring fiddler Stanislav Raiko. Ukrainian music culture and above all its independence are under threat like never before, but the success of the Kalush Orchestra at the 2022 Eurovision Song Contest is just one symbol of the determination of Ukrainians, both at home and abroad, to persevere and to triumph. Music